so I did an overview of pretty much every piece that I really regularly wear out of these homages. So now I'm going to kind of run through the highlights, talk about, you know, comparison of the different divers, compare the different brands and, you know, just talk about different things. So the first thing I want to point out is, you know, these three brands right here. So that's Sea Stern, Proxima and San Martin. These are, you know, these are my top three. If I'm looking for a Chinese homage watch, if there's something available from one of those three brands, that's what I'm gonna go for. I really trust them, the quality's good. You can get them in around the $200 price range. And I do find that they, they're worth it, right? You can get something like a Pagani design for 50 bucks, right? Maybe $100 is the standard price. Is it worth it to spend double on something like this? I mean, in my opinion, yes, because as you can see, all of these are on the winder and I wear them weekly these ones kind of just sit in the case, right? So if you can spend that extra little bit of money and it becomes a daily watch for you, I think that's worth it. I mean, your mileage may vary, but I've tried all these brands and I really have stuck with these these three up here. And, um, you know, there's other brands in the same tier. I know Baltany is the same level. Su Suges, Suges, that's the same brand as Seastern and they're very high quality as well. They kind of focus more on, they have a lot of chronographs, mechanical chronos. Um, sea Stern is more their regular. They do their dive watches under them as well. So really good brand there. Proxima is their own thing. They um, One of the standout things about Proxima is they have the best customer service in the game. When you buy a watch from them, they will send you a picture of the actual watch they're going to send you with your name written on the tag. They'll put it on time graph where you can see the results of your exact watch and you can QC it basically before they send it out to you. So they're awesome. You know, Proxima is a really good company. And the one thing about Proxima is that they've kind of picked a couple designs and stuck with them. So they have this beautiful light catcher case from Christopher Ward that they obviously copied, right? So, but they, they executed it really nicely. It's, it's super thin, wears really nicely. The dimensions are actually better than the Christopher Ward for a small wrist. But the thing is, they've been kind of iterating on this exact same case now for you know, over a year. So they haven't really, really, they haven't really released anything overly exciting, just different colorways of this watch. They have an Explorer as well, a 36, a 37 millimeter Explorer actually. And they've just been iterating on those. So I would love to see Proxima come out with something new because they are probably my overall favorite, right? Because they have the good customer service, really good quality. They're unique. I mean, nobody else is making a diver this thin on AliExpress. So yeah, Proxima, definitely a brand to look out for. I hope they you know, keep it up and make some new stuff. And then San Martin, that's the big boy. Everybody knows San Martin and makes a really good quality watch. Um, you know, to an extent, I think they're, I wouldn't say overhyped, but they're, they're the number one brand that you do hear about. Whereas I would urge you to look at, you know, Proxima and Seastern and Baltany as well, because the quality is right there up, uh, right up there with San Martin. Really, there's no difference in quality. The pricing is very similar. And actually to give you an example, this San Martin right here, this is about $220 for the SN0138, about the same for this SN004. And remember, these are both standard, you know, Seiko movements, NH35 in both of them. Um, you know, so it's a little bit thick. The movement's a little bit thick. It's not high beat. Um, it's nothing special, basically, but it is a workhorse, a workhorse movement. But on the other hand, this Seastern right here is the exact same price, $220. It's built just as nicely, but you get a high beat at a clone, um, you know, so you get the high beat movement. It's thinner, right? So the case is thinner. So you are getting really good value out of these brands. I would urge you to look at across the top level brands of AliExpress rather than just jumping to San Martin, right? And as you know, like I love San Martin. It's my daily is a San Martin slash watch dives, but you know, you can get really good value out of Sea Stern, Boltony, Proxima, um, I'll throw an Octopus Kraken, Ixdao, which I believe is a pretty new brand. It might be pronounced Nine Dao. Um, another really good brand to look out for. So, yeah, and that's kind of the overview of the brands I like to look for. Um, as you can see, I'm not afraid to buy one of the lower end watches. I really love my Tandorio. These two Paganis, also really good watches. So, if you're just trying to get something in a certain style and you know, you're looking for the features like Sapphire Crystal, screw down crown, um, the water resistance that you're looking for, stainless steel case with a bracelet, things like that. You know, you can get a really good piece for 50 bucks, right? So I recommend, 
you kind of look at your priorities. Are you going to look at the last mile finishing and the things like that? Or are you more concerned with just getting the features that you want? And in that case, you know, something like a Pagani or a Tandoria, those are going to be great watches for you. You know, they do the job. The one thing I will say is uh, Tandoria specifically, the water resistance cannot really be trusted. Um, Gary from I Like Watches did some pressure testing on these Tandorias and they basically all failed at way less than the rated depth. So I don't know if it's a QC thing or if they don't put the right gaskets in, but basically these guys, I don't trust them as much as these guys in the water. All four of these actually, and this one, all five of these, I wear in the shower daily. So, you know, they're waterproof, no problems there. You can swim in a pool with them. I won't say that they're 200 meters water resistant as they, as they claim, but you know, I do trust the manufacturing and QC of those brands a little bit better. And um, next I wanna kind of dive into just straight up specs, right? Like we'll just talk about, I'm gonna talk about these top four and this one and just roll over kind of the differences. So I'm gonna take this off, put it up here. I'll replace the Sestrian and we'll just talk divers. And this is, um, I think, a pretty good comparison. These are all in about the 200-ish, $250 range. They're all dive watches, and they have some differences, so I'm gonna run through them. So I've separated them actually by movement type. So we have the High Beats over here, the Seiko NH movements over here. So these are both, both NH35. These are Eta clones. This one is a PT5000. This one, a Seagull ST2130. So that's kind of the difference in movement, and they kind of follow the same patterns here. So we have two different styles as well. These are more skin divers. These are standard, you know, slab-sided divers, right? Um, kind of going further with that, these are a little bit more classy style, right? I mean, I would lump in this, this blue one. It, it's simple, round indices, pretty classy watch. But, I mean, if you look at these, they're thin, elegant. Um, you know, they have a little bit of extra something over a standard dive watch, right? So that's another category where they kind of follow these lines. And then, you know, going into the cases, I won't be able to hold these all up, but I will pull them in the order of mid case thickness. And I already know this, so I'll just pull these out. So the thickest by far is this um, SN0138. So this guy, super slab sided, super thick, looks like a real tutor, honestly. It is thinner than that, you know, it's 13 millimeters, but it's all in the mid case. All 13 of those millimeters are right there in the mid case. Let me get focus real quick. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, all 13 millimeters are basically right there in the mid case. You have a little bit of a Rolex style case back, a little bit of bezel thickness, but yeah, you're getting a slab side with that one. Moving up the line, we have the SN004. So this is, the exact same thickness, but as you can see, that mid case kind of is cut down into the case back. And sorry about the focus. Yeah, that mid case is quite a bit noticeably thinner with a little bit more turn down to it. And it makes a difference. I'm telling you, this one wears thinner. So I do like the mid case on this one. The, the SN0138 is a little bit of a chunky boy, but that's okay. And then moving up the line a little bit further, you have the Seastern. So this one, again, super nice and thin, um, super nice and thin mid case, even thinner than the SN004. And what I like is look at that turn down. You're not going to get that on either of the Tudor styles. I mean, that's just part of the case design, but look at the turn down on the Seastern. A little bit more dramatic, a little bit more hugging the wrist, and it does feel that way when you wear it. This watch really does wear really nicely. Um, and then moving down the line, the thinnest of them, you know, by actually a pretty significant margin is the Proxima razor thin mid case. It's kind of cheating the way they do it. I mean, this little line of brushing is technically all the mid case is, but look at that undercut. I mean, there's definitely some thickness under there, but what matters is that it kind of hides that on the wrist. Like you don't really see a lot of the case on wrist. So what you're left with is this really thin, really nice looking mid case, really nice case design on that one. So in terms of dimensions, 
we do have kind of a wide variety. And let me just show you the thickest and the thinnest side by side. Yeah, so it's not an insignificant difference. You're gonna get a much thinner, lower profile case on some of these skin divers than a Tudor style case. And that's just, you know, they're copying the Tudor design. It is a slab sided case and Tudor even goes thicker with this, with their GMT. So, you know, people are okay with it and I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll put this on, I'll show you. It doesn't even look bad, right? So the 13 mil overall thickness is still not a deal breaker, right? This thing wears really nicely. Looks pretty good on the wrist. I mean, it does have a little bit of that chunkiness, but overall looking pretty good. And then let me transition to the thinnest and I'll show you what this Proxima looks like on wrist. Quite a bit thinner, as you can see. And the last thing I wanna to touch on is kind of the basic hardware features, things like that. Anything stand out for each watch. So I'll put these back in their spot. And I'll just run down the line. So the C-Stern, this one, you know, you get really good features on this. It's got, I'm not gonna mention the basics. Like these all have a sapphire crystal. They all have a screw down crown. They all have stainless cases. They all have a stainless bracelet. So I'm not gonna bore you with those details. I'll tell you what stands out about each one. So this one, what stands out is that it retains a lot of the quality and feel of a real like non-skin diver, so to speak, but it still wears like a skin diver. It wears really nicely, but it has that really good bezel action, really crisp. And I'll get into that later. Some of the thinner watches, the bezel's not as good as a full-size diver. So this one retains that really good bezel. It has a beautiful sunburst style. That's kind of one of the top features when you look at the front of this watch. It adds a little bit of something over a plain glossy dial and it's just really nice. And then right here, one of the biggest features, you have a toolless micro adjust clasp. So you can push and pull right here push, press the button and retract it right back out. You get about a link's worth of adjustment through here. And um, I'm about to go into a couple other ones in the future that have this clasp. Just remember, they're all basically the same. The Seastern, the only difference between this one and the San Martins is that this one is a little easier to operate. The button to release the clasp is looser so I can release it a lot easier, which I like. So, you know, overall, this is the best overall clasp of any of these watches. Toolless micro adjust, fully milled, a nice scissor, and like I said, easy to operate, easier than the San Martin, so. The Proxima, we kind of touched on what makes this one unique. It's really just that case. The design is just extremely, extremely nice. The end link fitment is nearly seamless, like some of the best I've seen even on genuine watches, not just homages. Really nice bracelet. You don't get a toolless micro adjust. It's a milled clasp, pretty good quality, not signed. Um, regular, you know, milled scissor clasp. You do get signing on the inside, which is pretty nice. Yep, signed inside. Um, all of these, uh, actually, I'll, all of these except for the C-Stern have a solid case back. The C-Stern does have a display case back and I find that it doesn't cut into the thickness much. So it's actually a pretty good one, but yeah. And then in terms of special features on this one, in terms of the front side, really nothing crazy here. You have a six o'clock date wheel. A lot of people really don't like the date wheel font and I don't either. So that's one of the downsides to this one. Another downside would be the, um, the very blue crystal. So the, the crystal has a really blue AR coating, kind of hard for you to see in this lighting, but noticeably more than, for example, the SN0138 or SN004, which both also have blue AR coating. All right, moving on to the SN0138. This one, nothing really super stand out about this one. I'd say the best feature is that it's a blue watch with a really good color match. Um, I don't know if it comes through on camera, but the dial 
and the bezel insert are really nicely matched, this powdery matte blue. That's the standout feature of this one. Other than that, I mean, the case is very standard Tudor. You do have toolless micro adjust. Um, the three that have that are this one, the SN004, and the C-Stern. Um, like I said, the San Martin version, it's exactly the same, but the button on the inside to release the clasp, a little bit tighter, harder to operate, so not a big deal. Nothing super stand out about this one features wise. And kind of the same story here for the SN004. You know, it's just a standard Tudor style design, pretty standard case. It is a plain case back, but you do have this exact same toolless micro adjust with a milled scissor, San Martin signed. Really good quality across this. And then, you know, I do like the bezel insert on this one, or the bezel action, I should say, the most on this one out of all of them. I'll give you a little bit of a preview. This one's just really, really crisp. It's kind of low effort, but still feels like it's deliberate. So yeah, I mean, there's a reason why this is my daily. It just does everything really nicely. Looks good on the wrist. And so, yep, I'll put it back on and go about my day. So I'll put the SN004 back on and throw the Cestrian back in the case. And to wrap up, basically, I just want to say, you know, this collection's always growing and evolving. I've learned a lot buying Chinese watches, right? You know, there's certain things that you have to be aware for, you know, customer service, the warranty. If you get a dud, you're basically going to have to pay out of pocket or grovel with AliExpress to get, you know, 50 bucks sent to you to get the service done, things like that. So, you know, in a way, I don't like that aspect of the industry. And, you know, I would urge you if you if you can, I mean, support the brands that make these designs. But if you're looking for a quality watch or you want to try out a different design, see if you like it, try something out for a little bit, I really would recommend looking into some of these brands. And like I said, there's a clear difference between some of these entry level, like $50 to $100 watches and then these $200, $250 watches from China, these are really approaching like micro brand level quality. You're getting really fine finishing across all the surfaces. You're getting all the features you'd really want. You're getting good designs. Attention to detail is there. So I think if you go up to this $250 range, you're getting a really good watch. And I used to kind of dabble in the Japanese entry level with Seikos and Orients. I still have a couple of my Seikos. I love them and I appreciate what they've done for the design language and you know they've innovated more than any other brand and like and I appreciate what they've done in terms of the designs and you know of course I like to support the innovation and original designs but in terms of pure quality these are going to beat any Seiko 5 sports so if you were looking at the SRPD or SRPE series these are about the same price they're better quality I mean just take my word for it it's basically across the board they'll have better bracelets They'll feel better. The finishing is much better. You can get a high beat movement if you want. You know, you get Sapphire Crystal. So you're getting better features and better finishing at the same price point. So I think that's really where these watches shine is right around that price point. I'd say above $350, $400. I would start looking at some of these great micro brands that are out there. You know, Traska can give you a watch for $500 that has features above and beyond what these offer better finishing, real customer service. And you know, in the $500 range, there are Chinese watches that go that high. So I don't know if I'd recommend going above maybe $300 for these watches because you know, when you spend $500, you expect some level of customer service, you expect some level of warranty, and you're not really gonna get that with these watches. So, you know, buy at your own risk, but from what I've seen and my experience, you can get a really nice piece a really good daily watch that you can look down at and you can feel it and it just feels quality. And that's something that I, I, I wasn't able to find until I found these brands. So, you know, I really recommend them. I wouldn't say that I recommend them, you know, unilaterally. I would say that you have to go into it knowing what to expect, but if you do, you can really get a good value on this market. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep talking about these watches as I get them in in the future, but I wanted to give you an update of what I have right now and kind of my thoughts on the Chinese watch industry as a whole. Um, yeah, but, you know, 
but yeah, um, subscribe to my channel and, and you know, give this video a like and I'll keep it up with some different videos. I'll have all sorts of content. Um, anything really relating to lifestyle and <laughs> honestly, a lot of it is about stuff, consumerism, product. I'm gonna be going over my camera collection soon. I do have some shoes that I wanna talk about, um, you know, quality leather shoes as well. So just stay tuned. I'm kind of just still feeling out what this channel is gonna be, but general lifestyle, men's goods, products like that, you can come here and I do kind of extensive long format reviews of these things. So just uh, subscribe and keep an eye out and I'll be posting in the future. Thanks everyone, have a good day.